I don't know how to tell you how proud I feel today for being able to speak to you, Labour Party, to you, the future of Britain, to you, the people who are going to change things for all of us, and tell you about my country and try to seek for your help for this purpose. When I was little, my dad used to sing a song to me, uh, which said uh, something like, Thorazina. A Thorazina in Arabic speaks about uh, revolution, and not just revolution, about the beauty of revolution, about how beautiful revolution can be. Those are the type of songs that I heard when I was little. So I can say that I'm the daughter of our revolution. I am the daughter of the Saharai revolution. I come from the last colony in Africa. I come from Western Sahara. This couple of days here have been enough to see that, unfortunately, our country is not very uh, known by most of the people here. So I'm going to take advantage to not let you know about that. Western Sahara is, and I repeat, is a Spanish colony because according to the United Nations, it's a decolonization process. So we have a very big problem of Spain being still responsible for us. But that's not our only problem. We were invaded by Morocco, allowed by Spain in this case. So we are still a colony which is invaded by a very brutal and oppressive force, which is Morocco. Um, when the invasion happened, mid-70s, some of our people were able to flee to the Algerian territory. So if there are any Algerians here, thank you once and every day for handing and giving us your hand and your land to leave. So we were able to settle our refugee camps you know, in the Algerian territory, and that is where I lived most of my uh, teenagerhood. Uh, I happened to have the possibility to travel to Europe afterwards, study there, work there, and be here today with us after learning English in Liverpool and speak to you in English. <laughs> and uh, tell you about our struggle, okay, and let you know. As I told you, I grew up in the Sahrawi refugee camps. As my uh, comrade African said, uh, in our case, in the, in the refugee camps, we didn't have any material things, but we were brought up in the revolution. We were brought up holding and embracing our dreams and hopes for our freedom, the pride, the dignity, and the will to be fighting. So that's why people, when they meet any of us Sahrawi people, they're usually shocked to see because we can speak in the name of our country and we take any single chance to do that. So we had to organize a country in the middle of uh, nowhere, in the desert, yeah, with the, with the uh, leading of the Polisario Front. And I have to say that if a war has anything positive in our case is the fact that as we are a very small community, women had to take a very active role. So women had to build the hospitals, women had to organize educational system, the health system, and absolutely as well as take the arms to defend ourselves as well. On the other hand, we cannot forget that part of our society stayed in the occupied territories. Uh, the situation in the occupied territories under the Moroccan oppression is totally different. There is no, absolutely no speech freedom. There is no uh, possibility of respecting any human rights or anything like that. Uh, your leader, Jeremy Corbyn, had the possibility in 2014 to visit our occupied territories and uh, he could see, uh, although you can imagine as having him visiting there, a lot of things were hidden and kept secret, of course, but still he could see something as simple as taking a picture and not being able to have that picture because they were all deleted so that that information could not be taken here and show it to the whole world and see how Morocco constantly violates all our rights detains our people, um, makes people disappear, tortures, and so on and so forth. In the last, um, I now have the possibility, not many Sahrawi people do unfortunately, but I do, to go to the occupied territories. And um, the fact of not being able to speak my mind as I'm doing now in front of you, uh, it's just totally heartbreaking. I uh, have to 
I have the possibility to speak to several activists there who have been disappeared for years, yeah? who have been raped constantly, whose houses have been put apart, whose families are destroyed because they've got different members of the family suffering all these issues once and again. Again, in the occupied territories, our women have and are constantly organizing a peaceful uh, resistance to this and trying to go for that liberation in a peaceful way, although it's deeply difficult, as you can imagine. For example, we, had, we managed to organize um, a home, a house, a building to be able to meet there and speak and speak in our language in Hassania, speak about our problems, train our women in order to be able to be prepared and qualified to fight for these. And the Moroccan government uh, forced the person, the, the, the landlady of that house, to stop that renting by blackmailing her, telling her, if you continue renting that house, we're going to kill you, we're going to do this to your children, we're going to... You can imagine the rest of the story, I think. So, um, last July, we, there was an African uh, football cup, okay? And uh, to imagine the oppression that we're suffering constantly in the streets of uh, Al Ayoun, our capital, the uh, police uh, ended up killing one girl, running over her, just because they were trying to stop the people from celebrating the victory of Algeria in the African football cup. So, that is a very tiny little example. So as uh, your, as I'm hearing here, and as I've heard uh, your uh, original leader, John Smith, and as I know the feeling of many of you, you're an internationalist part, isn't it? Yeah? So we guys need you in this case. We need you to call for the United Nations Security Council to set a date for a free and fair referendum for self-determination for Western Sahara. We need you for that. We need you also to find some kind of independent observatory to be able to go to the occupied territories and then report what the Moroccan police army government is doing to our people every single day of the year. We need you to be with us and I want to take the advantage to call to that passion, to that blood inside you, to be with us, to stand with us, because I think that you are here for the same thing as me. You're finding justice, you want to fight for your rights, you have your own revolution, so please take your revolution, get in charge of everything, and then please stand with us and help us be independent as well. To finish, basically, that's it. We need you, we need every single person in this room and the people who are listening to us worldwide too, to stand with us, to remember where Western Sahara is, not to forget it. I know there are a lot of conflicts all over the world, but please, we do need to give an end to this after 45 years of conflict. We want to go back home, we want to reunite our families, and thank you very much. Thank you so much, Khadija. Solidarity. Our final speaker is another tireless advocate for his people, for his people's right to freedom. Louis Olivier Brancot, the leader of the Chagas refugee group, who will tell us how a Labour government under Jeremy Corbyn can make an immediate difference in delivering justice to the Jagosian people. Please, conference, please give a warm welcome.